uh, no. Uh, if you are uh, looking at Palgar district, I would like to start with the coast because there are some very, very important Portuguese forts. I'm sure uh, all of you here are familiar with the uh, Basin uh, fort, which was you know, after Goa, it was the biggest settlement uh, for the Portuguese. But the another, there is, if you go uh, from Palgar further up, there is this fort called Shirgaon, uh, which is fairly well preserved. It's, uh, and it, I think it came to the Marathas in 1739. Now, why I mention these forts is these are forts which also, uh, during the lifetime of Shivaji, he couldn't capture them. A lot of these forts were captured after 1737 and uh, the attack on uh, Basin or Vasai. And then a lot of the forts. So there is uh, Shilgaon, there is uh, Kelva, and there's, of course, at Godbandar. And uh, Godbandar, again, uh, was an important trading uh, uh, port for, for horses. And so, therefore, that is something which for me is, uh, is very interesting. So, Pagar, of course, uh, there are a lot of interesting uh, forests. And if you go towards Palgar, there are routes which take you right up to uh, Trambakeshwar uh, from Javahar, Mukada. And uh, uh, there are lots of small, small places which you can visit uh, in Palgar. And of course, uh, in Maharashtra, I'm familiar with at least two or three hot springs uh, in Palgar district. You know, Vajleshwari, then the Satavli. Okay, so therefore, that is uh, something. And if you... Uh, from Palgar, I like to cover Thane district. Now, for me, Thane is, is uh, fascinating because uh, of the two ports, Kalyan and Supara, which are there in, uh, in uh, uh, which, were, which, were, which were ancient ports. And from Thane district, you could walk up uh, to the Deccan Plateau, okay, the, towards Junnar, uh, through this uh, uh, route called uh, the, uh, what should we call, Nanigat. I don't know if any of you have done it. You should watch. It's a good walk through lovely forest. And of course, the, there are a lot of big stones. So sometimes it, the, the path is not too smooth. But when you reach the top, you see, you see a cave with inscriptions uh, which go back to the Satvahana's period. Uh, and therefore, there is a mention of Vedic gods in that. There's also an interesting thing about the fact that it was supposed to be a, a toll, uh, you know, a trade toll route. And there is a structure, I mean, there's a big pot-like structure, uh, which people claim that was collect the toll money, but others question that. So Thani has, if, if you really uh, go to Thani, that's one part. The other part is if you move from uh, uh, Kalyan, go to Murbad, there's Malshe's Ghat, which is in the, which is, uh, in the uh, borderline between Thani and Pune districts. And from there, if you go to slightly further, there is this village called Kireshwar. And from there, you can climb up uh, to one of the bigger forts in Maharashtra, the Harishandragad, which also has some amazing monuments going back. Uh, I mean, the temples and other structures will go back you know, to more than 2,000 years. And so Thanif is, for me, important historically. Of course, uh, those of you who are part of the Asiatic Society are familiar with the mound in Nalasopara, uh, the Supa, which is now being uh, you know, uh, developed as a part of the tourist circuit. Uh, but if you are a naturalist, there are nice jeels in Nalasopara, where a lot of wintering birds come in, which is also good for uh, people to see. But if you look at Palgar and Thani, you know, I, I don't know if any or how many of you have visited uh, uh, Vasai Fort. Vasai Fort for me is not just a part for historical walks, it's also a part. Uh, a place where you know, we, do, we can do interesting nature trails. Butterflies, birds, uh, reptiles, sometimes small mammals. And of course, the, you know, the structures which are still there, you know, there is, they tell such an uh, interesting story. Uh, so, and of course, if you look at Thani, Thani as for a lot of people is more known as the industrial hub. And I just want to talk a little about uh, Bivandi. Now, Vivandi is something which I'm sure a lot of you know it as a place which is about 15 kilometers from Thani uh, and a place which is known as the, uh, you know, as the largest center for power looms, which became important once the uh, uh, textile strike destroyed the uh, textile industry. 
but if you go to Bimandi, it also used to be uh, a port okay? uh, on one of, on the river. So it used to be an it is an ancient port. Not only that, it was also it was uh, has some connections with the uh, the uh, extended part of the Mughal Empire, and uh, some records say that uh, uh, earlier Bimandi was known as Islamabad. And there is a mosque in uh, Bivand, which is which is called Islamabad Mosque. So that is something is interesting. And also, if you look at Bivandi currently now, it's possibly the biggest uh, warehousing hub in India because of its proximity to Navaseva port. And of course, uh, it has changed a lot of that. Uh, you know, there is there is so much of dust and all that. But it's also one of the you know it's it's it's, it's actually a municipal corporation. I remember going to uh, uh, Bivandi in the uh, in the eighties and nineties. Nineties, I remember. It was a small town. And uh, those of you who like to read, you must uh, uh, read this book called uh, Truck Day India. It talks about traveling again uh, across India uh, by hitching rides on a truck. And uh, that's where there's a lot of uh, about Bivandi as uh, one of the biggest. You know, logistic hubs in India. Uh, you know, they say it's possibly has some of the biggest warehouses in Asia. So when you talk about a place like Thani, you know, where there's Kalyan, or again, if you go to uh, in Kalyan, if you go to Ambarnath, you know, there is this, uh, you know, one of my favorite temples uh, dedicated to Shiva. The Ambarnath temple built possibly around 1060. It's about two kilometer walk from the railway station. And you must visit it. Don't go to a during Mahashivratri times because there's too many people. But you must go with time. Just sit. There's also a legend that Shivaji uh, came to that to this uh, temple after the killing of uh, Abzal Khan, and that he possibly came for price chit. I mean, this is a part of legends. There is no uh, evidence for that, but it's an interesting part of the legend. But again, if you look at Maharashtra, there are so many interesting dynasties. Uh, this is uh, built by uh, the uh, Silharas. Okay. And, uh, and of course, so therefore, every uh, district and every place, uh, if you just uh, explore, you, I mean, there are so many things which uh, one would discover which one possibly has no real idea. And if you, even if you look at the uh, uh, Sanjay Gandhi National Park. You know, it starts in, uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, it's the, the earlier the entrance used to be from uh, Goregaon, from near uh, Film City. There's an entrance called Hatti Gate, which is now closed. Uh, but if you go towards uh, the, uh, if you enter and go above Canary Caves, even today there is a route which you can walk uh, and come out of Thani. And of course, at the highest point of the Sanjay Gandhi National Park, uh, it is now our air house. There's a radar station. But the highest point of the National Park, you know, from there, you know, uh, the walk towards uh, Thani, I mean, it's, it's a good, lovely forest. So if, if, if you really want to uh, enjoy, uh, uh, you know, uh, Maharashtra, you should walk. Similarly, once you cross behind the creek, I'm sure you're familiar with Tungareshwar, which is now in Palgar uh, uh, district. But before Tungareshwar, much before Tungareshwar, there's a very interesting forest walk called Nagla. You can go by car up to the entrance, park your car and walk in. I mean, it's a, and you'll come out near the uh, creek. You know, so there is, you know, it's interesting opportunities. I'm not really talking about uh, Canary Caves, etc., because I'm sure there are people who are going to talk about it. But whenever any guest comes, or any friend of mine, or guest comes from anywhere in the world, I always take them to Canary. And I, my, my biggest regret is so uh, few people in, in Mumbai city, given its population, are familiar with this historical treasure, or even this natural history treasure of the Sanjay Gandhi National Park. And therefore, from there, if you just go down, uh, you know, if you uh, go towards Raigad district. In Maharashtra, Raigad district uh, is the most interesting district for me. 
because if you look at Raigad district, it has uh, 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 an amazing patch of evergreen forest at Mathiran. And if you proceed further to Karjat, and from Karjat, there are interesting pathways you can walk up to, uh, you know, which is that uh, Rajmachi, which is near Lonavla. Or there's another trek uh, from Khandas, which you can walk up to Bhima Shankar. And, that, and there are two or three routes. And I remember there's one route called the, uh, uh, I think, uh, yeah. Uh, it is the ladder walk, which is tough, which, you know, which I was able to do uh, three, four years ago. But there are lots of routes up to Bhima Shankar. Bhima Shankar, you know, uh, uh, there's Jyotir Ling. Uh, there is, I think, one of the finest Dev Rai's you can find anywhere in Maharashtra. So from Karjat, no, there is, a, therefore, Raigad includes Karjat. Raigad includes Kopoli. Raigad includes uh, uh, Mathiran, as I said. And of course, today in Mathiran, we don't see much wildlife because of uh, tourists uh, spoiling monkeys. And this proliferation of monkeys has driven most of the wildlife away from the main parts of Mathiran. Now you can rarely see, sometimes at sunset point and all, some at, at times you can see, sometimes, you know, uh, some other wildlife other than uh, the uh, uh, bonnet macaques. So, but as if you mentioned Raigad, of course, the coast. Uh, there are, you know, amazing uh, sea forts. So if you come to Raigad and if you move uh, beyond Panvel and if, you, if you're moving towards uh, Alibad on that road, I don't know how many of you have stopped to visit Shirdun village. Shirdun is a place where Vasudev uh, Balan uh, Farke, uh, often seen as the first evolutionary uh, in Maharashtra after 1857. His villages, his house is there. There's a small memorial there. And if you go further, I don't know how many of you have climbed of Karnala Fort. Now, Karnala Fort is interesting because till uh, the early 2000s, there used to be, in one, side, one, in one of the inside walls, there used to be Persian inscriptions. Vandals have taken it away or destroyed it. Like we can't see it anymore. But it was also the site of... Uh, the uh, 1857 mutiny, because uh, some of the forces to regroup, they came, they were in this fort. So if you're going to walk up this fort, it's very difficult through the forest, because the actual path, the route, the British blew it up with cannons. So that forts like this don't become sanctuaries for uh, people like that. So again, it, it's, it is such uh, uh, interesting history. A lot of people walk up to the fort, just walk up and come or spend time in the uh, bird sanctuary. And if you proceed further in Raigad districts, especially from uh, Pain onwards, Raigad is often called the rice bowl of Maharashtra. Because the maximum production of rice uh, is, you know, in uh, Panmil Taluka, Pain Taluka, Maha, all these areas. Okay. And therefore, in terms of economically, I think it's, it's uh, in terms of food. Uh, earlier, of course, there was a lot of rice going in Karjat. But now a lot of Karjat uh, the fees are being converted into, uh, you know, farmhouses and other things. So that, the, that part is uh, reducing. But in Karjat, uh, there used to be an institute which is to collect uh, seeds, you know, to see. Uh, they say that one time in uh, Raigad district itself, there were more than 200 varieties of uh, rice seeds. And there's a group which is attempting to preserve it because now with a lot of the, you know, uh, new stains which are coming, people are forgetting a lot of this, uh, you know, these uh, uh, old stains. And of course, uh, if you go towards the district headquarters, Alibad, uh, there's the Kulaba Fort. Okay. And uh, further, if you go, you know, uh, the interesting thing is from, uh, right from uh, uh, Shirgaon, up to Dapoli, the Portuguese had, sat, I mean, had a lot of forts. And one of the biggest forts is, of course, uh, it is at, I mean, in, uh, today the town is called Revdanda, but it was the Chaul Fort. And in the early 16th century, there's a major naval battle between the Mamluks of Egypt and the Portuguese. Initially, the Portuguese lost, and of course, they defeated the Mamluks. They, they controlled the sea routes. 
to Africa from uh, from that this side. Of course, a lot of Chaul Fort doesn't really. I mean, it's is people have they uh, have claimed the places and they are converting into guest houses and whatever else. But there's still some structures. There's one particular structure uh, which is a remnant of a basilica. I think. It has such a grand, you know, uh, cross beam of concrete. It's one of the biggest I've seen. Similarly, before that, if you go to Korlai Fort, it's on a hill. It's a small uh, lookout fort for the Portuguese. There's a mention that Francis Xavier visited it. So, when you talk about Raigar uh, district, there are so many things again in terms of the uh, Savitri River. It starts from near Mableshwar. It's, it's a very powerful river. And you know, uh, historically, uh, Mahad was a major port. Okay. And uh, now, of course, uh, it is, uh, you know, a lot of the river, river has changed course. So the river near Mahad is not really very broad or deep. But right from, I think, uh, uh, 8th or 9th century, it was an important port. And uh, Near Mahar, there's a fort. I don't know if any of you have gone to this fort. It's a small fort called the Dasgam Fort. Okay. And if you go to Dasgam Fort, you can see uh, the confluence of, I think, uh, uh, the Kalu and Savitri River. Okay. Which is, again, which is a fantastic view. Or if you go further, uh, there is this fort called uh, Bankot. And the Bankot, of course, it was. Some people say the original name was Bhavan because it was the 52nd fort which the, uh, under the, you know, Maratha Empire, uh, they captured. But from 1755, because a lot of the Maratha forts after 1818 came into British hands. But Bancourt came into uh, British hands in uh, uh, 1755. And if you walk up, it's not much of a walk into a Bancourt uh, fort. You can see the Savitri River. And Bancourt for me is... Uh, uh, personally, uh, uh, very interesting because uh, uh, John Wilson, who founded, uh, who established Wilson College, was also uh, one of the, uh, I mean, longest, one of the long-serving presidents of uh, the Asiatic Society. His first first public serv uh, uh, sermon in uh, Marathi was at Bangkok, and I always wondered why did he choose Bangkok, and then I realized the fact that there was a significant, there was a British fort and a significant British presence uh, there and therefore possibly he chose that as a uh, place which uh, he could talk, he could you know, talk to people uh, in terms of not really affected so much by Western influence. Uh, maybe he thought his work could start there. I've never understood that. But along the course, you see so many interesting forts. I'm sure uh, all of you are familiar with uh, Murud, there is Murud Janjira, there's Murud Hadnai, there's Suvarnadurg. There are lots of temples, you know, Hariharishwar. Because the Savitri River flows into the Arabian Sea near Hariharishwar. And that's one of those that I've just loved. When the, uh, whenever I've gone, I've gone when it was not very crowded. There's hardly anybody. Maybe I went at a time, it was not uh, season time. And many of these uh, beaches you can find such, you know, especially winter. You can see so many, uh, you know, waders, those of interest in natural history. So, if you look at Raigar, of course, there are very interesting caves, Buddhist caves, Tanale. There's also near uh, uh, Mahad uh, port, there is, uh, I forget the name, starts with G. There is, uh, again, Buddhist caves there. And recently, they found evidence of, from uh, this side that there was a trade with Rome in terms of, you know, both in terms of cave, uh, you know, sculptures and things like that. So, Raikar district, of course, it is uh, extremely exciting. And uh, uh, for those of you, uh, yeah, it's true that uh, the British called Victoria Fort, that uh, uh, so, what, so its name has been changing. I think uh, before that it was called Manga, Manga or something like that. So therefore, uh, yeah, Gandhar Parle Thank you. 
so so these are you know interesting of course if you uh, like maratha history you must uh, uh, walk up raigad fort of course there is a rope way but walking up raigad fort is an experience in itself and uh, when you talk about raigad fort it's one of, it's a it's a massive fort you must have at least you could even spend a day walking around and raigad fort for me is interesting because the first time i went i think it was in 1990 or 1989 and the first time i went i i think i heard the malabar whistling thrush for the first time there and 2019 december i went back uh, or 2000 yeah 2020 december when there was a lull in the uh, thing i walked went back to raigad fort and again i this time i actually saw the malabar whistling thrush so forts and places can have interesting connections for people for me it's always birds uh if you go to karnala you always see a pair of uh, peregrine or shaheen falcons these are the these are these birds are supposed to be the fastest flying birds when they dive they reach uh, speeds of 375 kilometers an hour and they nest uh, on that thumb uh, which is on karnala fort so uh, this is uh, a little bit about when you talk about uh, raigad uh, district uh, so in terms of whether it's agriculture whether it is uh, uh, history whether it is uh, maritime trade and also if if from from raigad if you crossing into uh, ratnagiri there is on the border there is a village called mapur and mapur is very interesting because there was a lot of trade with uh, arabia the ships used to come up to because the savitri river was deep enough then it had not uh, begun to silt up so much so big trading ships used to come up to mapur okay. so these are you know uh, gems which you can discover in every single uh, place or if you looking at in terms of the you know the uh, uh, i mean if you go to in, in most of uh, uh raigad district uh the the peasant community is mostly the agris i remember one of the uh, talks organized by ishatic uh, on the salt pans the speaker was talking about the role of agris also in uh, salt trade but a lot of the peasant community in uh, raigad district is mostly agris but of course the uh, the katkaris uh, the tribe is basically Uh, gets our katta from acacia trees acacia katechu trees and they're also supposed to be you know one of the finest people for harvesting mangoes okay. because there are a lot of orchards of mangoes in many parts of raigad district ratnagiri and a lot of the people who work on them are katkaris uh so therefore the if you're looking at uh, raigad district there is you know uh, short trips walk around talk to people there is so much you know you will discover something i'm not covering because i don't have too much time i have to still cover uh uh ratnagiri and uh, uh sindhudur but i'll come back to this maybe i can take a quest now before i i proceed if there any questions related to raigad uh pani Uh, if anybody wants to ask questions or uh, make uh, 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 I mean, have any comments or have any disagreements, uh, it will be interesting to have a conversation. I'd rather take uh, questions when I finish uh, parts. Of course, one could talk about the Warlies in uh, in uh, uh, Dhanu uh, in Palgar district. You know, their art is now world famous. uh you know but it's interesting if uh, if anybody has any questions uh anything you want to ask or say see on the course below janjira you can see shivardhan uh shivardhan is uh, was the first yeah. in uh, maharashtra uh, which had 100% literacy uh sudhakar yeah would you like to take the remote control so that with the cursor you can show them the places on the map no i am not really so good with technology i think if somebody showing me i'm talking i prefer that thank you 
Uh, okay, so here is Janjira and here is Sri Vardhan. Yeah. You can follow my yeah. cursor. So here after I'm going to uh, yeah. listen Thank to you. him and show you the place. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah, somebody mentioned about this, you know, the uh, Kulaba Fort, uh, which is off Alibag, because that was uh, one of the major uh, ports of, uh, you know, the an important capital of uh, Kanuji Angre. You know, one of the uh, saddest part about, you know, for uh, Maharashtra or India is that, you know, there is very little recognition of the kind of feats which uh, of Kanuji Angre. I believe he was possibly the finest admiral in uh, India. Uh, and especially if you go towards, I mean, I'll talk about Vijaydur Fort and the kind of uh, interesting uh, defense systems which he created. And if you look at the Kulaba Fort, it also had a dry dock for repair of ships. And from Kulaba uh, Fort, uh, Kanuja Angre used to harass the Britishers. Actually, if you go to Alibag itself, there are there are quite a few small for one of the four, one of the smaller forts in the jail. That's why if you if you you know if you go around places, you will discover things which you know which. Uh, just in history books or even uh, brochures or anything will not really do justice. A friend of mine said there are six remnants of six uh, uh, forts in Alibag town itself. If people can, uh, Kulaba is one, but the other six. Uh, yeah, so therefore there is, you know, there are uh, so many things which you could discard. And also if you go to Alibag, uh, there are, you know, in, in uh, that area, there are quite a few synagogues. No, it is something which you can again uh, uh, discover because again, uh, even if you go to Murud Janjira, there's one structure which you know I believe could have been a, uh, a synagogue or some place of worship for the Bene Israelis. Because that's something which is, because they were in, the, in that area. Uh, so if you are... Uh, uh, if you can you know, if you visit, you'll find, I mean, things I was very surprised to discover at least two or three synagogues around Alibad. Okay. Uh, I'm not really, I, I didn't uh, know that they existed till about three or four years ago. So the process of, uh, uh, oh wow, somebody has a map of all the synagogues. Uh, so, yeah. So I'm not, see, there are a lot of forts around, you know, when you talk about Kanderi, uh, Undheri, but I'm talking in Alibag city itself. Okay, so that's something which you could uh, also uh, look at. I mean, yes, there is a lot of sharing about the uh, synagogues. I don't know if somebody is covering that in detail. Uh, but, you know, for, you know, a lot of people, when, when people travel to Alibag, they often say, what is there to see in Alibag other than the beach? Uh, yeah, Hiralkat Fort is a, is the is a prison. So I say that there is so much you know in Alibag other than the beach which you can actually search for. Starting with the synagogue, starting with the uh, the smaller fort, or even a walk up to Kankeshwar Temple, which is I think a few kilometers from Alibag. Yeah, that's it's a beautiful temple and it's a nice walk up uh, to uh, a good forest patch. Okay, so therefore, that is, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, any other questions, comments? Madhu, will you take the questions from the chat box? Yeah, can somebody just uh, read out the questions? Yeah. Okay. I I'll read out. Okay. Uh, Mrinal Papadia says that Bancourt Fort was once called Fort Victoria by the yeah. company and was apparently visited for the nearby hot springs. Okay. Uh, Yogi Raj, of course, has lots to contribute. He says, Sir Temple and Khandarpal Buddhist Caves. Yeah, yeah. Ashan Karat has just given an excellent series on Chol. Uh, Sudhakar, we've even covered up the synagogues in our a series on Shalom Bombay, the truth of, uh, you know, Bombay. Okay. So we have covered up all that over there. Yeah, but I see but a lot of people are possibly in this group. I may not be familiar. Yeah. yeah. A lot of then, my uh, 
students and all i'm sure are not familiar with those who are in this group so i yeah. thought maybe it's a good idea to just mention i know yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ankur says, why hasn't Turan or nearby areas developed to be a warehouse, a warehouse hub? They are much closer to JNPT port than actual Bivandi. Because so Bivandi is a so Tagda highway because it's uh, because they are choosing ports which I mean the place uh, logistically in terms of because it's on the uh, uh, Agra highway because to Delhi then it becomes to North India it becomes much easier because the highway already exists. Uh, and also the road towards Suran, etc., often has been in bad shape and have not developed. So because this is an existing uh, uh, place near the uh, highway going towards the north, that's why uh, Bivandi has been there. Yeah. Then Ravindra asks, please tell us about Sudhagar Fort near Pali. Uh, Sudhagar Fort, yeah. I don't... Near Pali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll have to, I mean, I don't remember much. I've been there so long ago, but uh, sorry, I don't remember much about that. Maybe in the fourth section, somebody can cover that. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. I think then there is Ramesh who is saying that I have a map of all the synagogues. Maybe Ramesh, you can share it with everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Does Ulve near Uran find a place in historical records? Only recently now they are doing because otherwise there is of course a lot of thing but as of now there's not too much in terms of uh, known to popular you know if you know about in the popular history there's not much. Okay. Now that's another interesting event. He just I mean the question was asked for Pali. You know there are quite a few temples in uh, Maharashtra, I mean, uh, Bhima Shankar and Pali where there are uh, uh, both church bells from Vasai which were given as uh, you know as thanks. Uh, to these temples. So that is uh, an interesting thing to discover. You know, Pali was where I've seen. I've also seen it in uh, Bhima Shankar, but there are two or three other temples also. Some places now they have removed it and they're kept in the store. But that is uh, uh, interesting. Yeah. So I've just read out the questions. There are lots of information and yeah. um, you know observations which I'm not reading out. Yeah. yeah okay. So I think that's all for the time being. Yeah. Uh, so, as I said, some of, I mean, there are people who possibly spend a lot more time uh, doing more extensive. I'm just taking uh, this kind of journey in terms of, you know, a lot of these excursion explorations, which uh, uh, one can discover, uh, you know, which uh, interesting things, which, and there's so much more to be uh, discovered. Because uh, when you move from Raigar and Ratnagiri, Ratnagiri, now they have uh, uh, discovered a lot of these, uh, you know, petroglyphs. And they're still discovering more. And there's a lot of work being done on petroglyphs. Uh, so the first you move into uh, Ratnagiri in terms of, of course, uh, if you go to Ratnagiri town, you must uh, go to uh, Ratnadurg fort. It's again a fort which overlooks the uh, sea. And, uh, you know, now, of course, uh, there, is a, there is a temple inside. Now, of course, entry into the fort at night is not allowed. But when I first went in 89 or 90, you could actually spend time uh, inside the fort, was, uh, and that was uh, that was for me uh, an extremely good experience in terms of sitting on the fort walls. Uh, of course, the Tiba Palace in Ratnagiri uh, city itself, uh, where the last king uh, of uh, uh, Burma uh, was exiled, and therefore part of it, of course, is converted into an administrative office. Uh, yeah, so the church building uh, so. Uh, so therefore, the Tiba Palace is again worth visiting, though of course, half of it is now occupied by uh, uh, government offices. Uh, so, so therefore, maybe a lot of the artifacts, etc. have gone, uh, uh, sold, but there is I'm still there's a lot of room for improvement of the Tiba Palace. Uh, again, when you go to uh, places like uh, Ratnagiri, there are these interesting, I mean, uh, uh, you can go towards uh, Marleshwar, uh, which is a waterfall. Uh, there's also a, a, a stalagmite, which is, I mean, it's part of a, uh, there is a temple there dedicated to Shiva there. Uh, so, but uh, Marleshwar, again, when you walk through uh, part of it, it looks as if you're walking through the Grand Canyon because there are these steep cliffs on both sides. Uh, so, Ratnagiri, of course, is, is uh, uh, the place, of course, I mean, if you go to Ratnagiri town, you must visit Tilak's house, 
uh, which is a museum. It's an, it, it's, it's an interesting place to visit. And uh, uh, Ratnagiri is also where uh, Savarkar was interned, where he wrote uh, Hindutva. Uh, uh, so the uh, Ratnagiri district, uh, in terms of it, also um, is, the, is the district of uh, Madhu Dandavate. Uh, for me, Madhu Dandavate is uh, somebody whom I uh, really admire because when he was the uh, uh, Minister for Railways, it was he who said uh, that why should people uh, in second class travel on wooden berths? So today, all of us, I mean, those of you us who travel by second class, the fact that the question happened when he was Railway Minister. He's also somebody who uh, envisioned the building of uh, the Konkan Railway project. And of course, the Konkan Railway was supposed to get a lot more prosperity to uh, Konkan region, but you know, a lot of industrial experimentation in people are in places like Chipun didn't really work out. Uh, but of course, also because Ratnagiri also is a place where, uh, which is uh, uh, known for mangoes and things like that, a lot of people are not very happy with uh, you know, projects like, uh, you know, even if you look at the uh, Jaitapur nuclear power plant. And the Jaitapur nuclear power plant is uh, 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 something which is, of course, not taking off because of the uh, political and local risk. Similarly, the Nana refinery, uh, which will be a greenfield refinery, which again, uh, the site of contestation. Uh, but Dabol in, uh, in uh, Ratnagiri became the first place where the uh, first private thermal power plant in India was planned. Uh, it was the Enron uh, project, which was canceled and then uh, uh, got back again. Uh, it was initially canceled by the Shiv Sena government when they came to power. And after a year, they got back the uh, power plant there. But that was also something which was uh, part of a very important political move. So when you say political mobilization in Ratnagiri around these projects, uh, which is interesting because uh, Environment and the double power plant was opposed because uh, how because the thermal power plants use a lot of water for uh, cooling and also release warm water inside uh, the creek. So therefore, they thought fisheries would get affected. But unfortunately, the power plant has not been doing too well. Uh, it is now run by three uh, public sector, I think, uh, uh, gas authority, NTPC, and one more. Uh, so double is uh, uh, interesting. Uh, in terms of economic history. Because when you're talking about the period of liberalization, the early period when people are looking at uh, uh, this uh, uh, particular, you know, uh, private partnership in developing uh, infrastructure. And uh, so it was supposed to receive uh, natural gas. They built a jetty to get uh, natural gas and run it on uh, natural gas, which is supposed to be less polluting than uh, uh, coal. So therefore, that was something, but it has not really taken off. It has had severe operational problems. Uh, so therefore, that's something which is, uh, you know, uh, uh, which needs to be explored why it has not worked. Because as an idea, it was very good, uh, but it didn't really work out. And also, if you go to Dapoli, and uh, it's, I think, one of the oldest agriculture universities. And uh, also, I'm, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you look at Ratnagiri, it's one of the places, you know, the Konkan uh, is where the Shivsena expanded very fast. And of course, uh, the whole of Konkan is a hinterland for uh, uh, Mumbai city. Uh, most, I mean, a large part of the manpower, uh, which comes from other parts of Maharashtra, the largest part from, uh, comes from the Konkan region. And also, if you go to uh, Ratnagiri, Ratnagiri was the first place in at least two or three villages uh, where I found that. Uh, uh, Shaka promotes for Muslims because in many Ratnagiri district uh, there is a there is uh, a lot of Muslim population. Uh, some of them are also Muslim majority popular uh, villages, and some of them also have Shaka promotes who are Muslims, which is uh, given the uh, uh, track record of you know the uh, Shiv Sena and the 93 riots and other things. I was uh, personally very surprised uh, even before that because 84 the riots had happened in Bivandi. And I remember visiting parts of Ratnagiri in 85, 86, and I was quite surprised to see that. So it's a very interesting thing in terms of how uh, people relate to political parties, uh, in terms of the official posturing and what it means to local people for various reasons. Um, 
and uh, uh, if you look at Ratnagiri again, it's uh, it's one of the uh, uh, highest uh, you know uh, cashew producing places uh, in uh, India. So therefore, that's the uh, interesting thing part about uh, Ratnagiri district. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, so before I come to Ratnagiri, also in terms of now. Uh, if you look at uh, the floods in, you know, Poladpur, Mahat, a lot to do with the fact also in terms of the, a uh, lot of the road construction, a lot of debris is dumped on the side of the roads and all of that, so for the kind of floods which have happened. In 2016, there was this uh, uh, flood which washed away uh, a bridge between uh, Poladpur and Mahat. And I was talking to somebody from there, he said the, the, the issue with Savitri is, Savitri has possibly about three catchments. One catchment is that Mahableshwar, which has one of the highest rainfalls. Mahar also receives one of the highest rainfalls for any uh, town in the plains. And then, the, then there is another catchment between Mahableshwar, you know, Prathapgarh and others, which also uh, you know, has a lot of water. So the Savitri in spate has, you know, has, uh, you know, is, uh, Created a lot of problems, and also if you look at uh, Raigad Fort, one of the reasons why Shivaji chose Raigad Fort was also because of the proximity uh, to Savitri River. In case there was a in case there was a huge uh, Mughal attack, and then the, he could go down the river, go along the coast because then he had these forts, Vijaydurg, uh, Sindhudurg, all of that is uh, something which uh, he could have uh, taken refuge in. So uh, strategically, Raigad Fort is, is located at that uh, point. It overlooks the uh, plains because of the height, but more important, it's proximity to Savitri River. Unfortunately, you know, uh, I've not found too much of material on uh, uh, trade routes in the, on Savitri and history in Savitri River. Because I'm sure there's a lot more than what can be easily found. Uh, because it is a, a really an important river in Raigad district. Uh, any questions or comments? Hello, Sudhakar, we have lost. Sudhakar, huh? we have lost you. We can't hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? No. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. Yeah. Are there any questions? No, there is nothing in the chat here just now. Okay. Uh, also, if you look at, you know, uh, uh, if you uh, go down, uh, uh, you know, if, if you look at Ratnagiri, if you go further uh, south of Ratnagiri, you find Devgad Fort. And if you look at uh, 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 Devgad Fort, uh, Devgad Fort is a fort which came, which is again built by the Angres. And if you go to Devgad Fort, there's a very interesting lighthouse there, which is worth. Uh, visiting. Of course, a lot of lighthouses, even if you go to Korlai, uh, there was a lighthouse which was in repair for a very long time. And you can see the different kinds of lighthouses uh, which you can find you know, the, uh, along the uh, coast in Raigar, Ratnagiri. And uh, Degwad Fort has a, uh, has a very good uh, lighthouse. And I think uh, they had begun to allow people to go up the lighthouse, visit, uh, because I've, I've, I've visited the lighthouse only once. Uh, but that's another uh, fort which is important. And also, if you look at uh, uh, the map, uh, go north. If you can look at uh, Hadnai, Murud Hadnai, uh, north of Ratnagiri. Because opposite Hadnai, there is this uh, small fort called uh, Suvarnadurg, which you can go by boat. And Suvarnadurg was possibly uh, one of the forts which the family of uh, Angre uh, owned. 
so from there now we move uh, down to uh, uh, Sindhudurg. And also if you uh, look at Sindhudurg in terms of uh, uh, the name is because of the Sindhudurg fort and uh, because of the way the fort was constructed. Uh, when the British took over, they called it uh, the Gibraltar of the East. And it's also one of the few forts where Shivaji himself physically worked uh, in the uh, building of the fort. Of course, a lot of the structures inside the fort have gone. But there's still a temple dedicated to Shivaji, which is footprints, uh, which is there inside the fort. And around the uh, uh, Sindhu fort is the, uh, uh, the Malvan Marine Sanctuary. Because we don't have too many marine sanctuaries and the only marine sanctuary in Maharashtra is the, is the Malvan Marine Sanctuary. And um, I think one of my first uh, encounter of sea cucumbers and a lot of sea creatures was off uh, the Sindhu fort. And uh, that historically, I think, is uh, amazing. But the fort which I would like, I don't know if uh, this is on the map here. Uh, my favorite fort, uh, sea fort in Maharashtra is the Vijayadurg fort. And it is, um, it is also called Geria, but it was renamed as Vijayadurg because it was conquered on Vijayadashmi. And it's the only sea fort I've seen which has a massive moat. And also it is uh, in the creek which, is, which opens up uh, into the sea. So earlier uh, it was around all sides by water, but now one side you can actually walk into the fort. And if you ever get a chance to visit one fort, uh, you must visit the Jaidur Fort. And uh, uh, also if you look at Vijaydur Fort, uh, uh, off the Vijaydur Fort, up to about 1.5 kilometers, there are walls uh, you know, uh, under the sea. And this is something which was uh, uh, an idea which Kanaji uh, uh, Angri and the local uh, uh, police worked on. What they used to do is they used to first create, uh, you know, these uh, uh, with bamboo. They used to create these kind of fences, you know, uh, bamboo on both sides. And in between that, they would uh, drop a lot of stones boulders and stones, which would be held by the uh, bamboos which were stuck. And over a period of time, the bamboo would wither away, but sea creatures would kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is that? Yeah, barnacles and others would cement it. And therefore, a lot of ships, uh, European ships which came towards Vizid would, would uh, sink because they were clashed against these walls. And you can't see the walls from top, but a lot of underground uh, divers have now found the way the but there are massive walls. So when you talk about, uh, it, it's man-made. These walls were actually made by people creating uh, these, you know, it is, it's a very interesting uh, architectural feat. Because now you don't see the bamboo supports because they were disintegrated over time. But uh, the rocks and stones and, uh, and uh, uh, big uh, structures, they have got cement to so, now it looks very irregular, almost natural. But it was made, it is because around the fort. And if you go to the fort, of course, there are stories. Uh, some people get very upset with some of these stories. There is uh, a very interesting uh, uh, temple. There is a temple dedicated to Shani. And uh, next to the temple, there is, uh, there is, there, is uh, there was, I think there is still a cannon. There, was, there used to be a cannon. And one of the stories which uh, people don't like to talk about is the fact that when I mean, they used to fire the cannon, they would also add curses of Shani to the cannonball shots. So the enemy is not only hit by your uh, uh, cannonball, but also ca carries the curses uh, of Shani, which is again a story which I've heard two or three times, but uh, uh, some serious historians felt I should not talk about these kind of stories. But a lot of forts get, uh, you know, are interesting because of these stories. What was the truth of that meaning? There's also a belief that one of the earliest discoveries of helium was done uh, by experiments on this fort. But if you go to the fort, there is still some structures which are still uh, remnant. There's a large granary which is still there. Uh, there's a part of a palace which is still there. Uh, uh, but again, as I said, the uh, 
uh, some tunnels, the moat uh, is something which is it's, it's so different uh, in, in the way that it is structured. And uh, I hope you visit and uh, you fall in love with it. Also, the Vijaydur port, uh, till 1983 or 84, there used to be a, there used to be a, there used to be a, a ship service. After 83 or 84, they have closed. Unfortunately, you know, the, uh, the uh, coastal uh, waterways uh, have not really uh, been used well. Sorry, the, uh, sorry if I was not clear. Uh, walls uh, around the, uh, I mean, uh, in front of the uh, Vijayadur Fort are underwater. So even now, if you, can, if you go, you will not see it. Okay, so therefore, that's, so that's why it's an architectural wonder in terms of defenses. And that was a fort which you earlier used to belong to the Adil Shah, then it was taken over by Shivadi, then it became a very important uh, uh, fort of the Angres. And then in the 1870s, I think uh, the uh, Peshwas and the British uh, uh, joined, and uh, the most important fort they took was Vijayadur. They passed under the British from uh, after that, even before 1880. Also, if you look at uh, 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 Sindhudurg, uh, one of the places which I would uh, uh, recommend that all of you should go is in monsoon, see if you can visit Amboli. Amboli is, is, is an amazing uh, patch of evergreen forest. And if you like uh, uh, frogs and reptiles and snakes, the sighting is fantastic in monsoon. The kind of species of frogs which are there, many which have been discovered uh, fairly recently. Samboli is one, and Amboli also. If you go, there is a uh, a small summer palace of the uh, Bosles of Savanpadi, which is in complete ruins now. But Savanpadi itself again is interesting uh, because the uh, Bosles of uh, Savanpadi were allied with. Adil Shah rather than Shivaji. And Shivaji defeated them, I think, in more than one battle. Uh, but they remained as allies of Adil Shah. Uh, but if you go to the, the uh, Savanthwadi Palace, a part of it is uh, open for display. And of course, the, uh, the, uh, the Darbar Hall is, in, is not in great shape. But a very interesting fact is there's a small bust of one of the uh, Savanthwadi rulers. And opposite the bust, there's a gigantic uh, uh, painting of Shivaji. A schoolmaster, uh, uh, you know, uh, gifted it to the uh, uh, descendants of the Bosleys. And you can't refuse because it's, it's ironical that during the lifetime of Shivaji and the Bosleys, they were never friends. Uh, but now if you go to the Savantwadi Palace, you'll find uh, a major. And uh, from Savantwadi, if you go further south in Maharashtra, there's a small fort called Terakol, and there's a beach just before Goa. So if you go uh, on top of Terakol Fort, you can see some of the uh, beaches of uh, North Goa. Uh, but Terakol Beach itself is interesting. There are not too many people. The Terakol Fort is a very small fort, uh, which has been now converted into a hotel. I'm not sure whether it's running. Because I don't think it's viable for some time. But there's a, still along the hotel, there's a small chapel inside it. Uh, so Terracol Fort is again, you know, it's, a, it's one of the few surviving uh, Portuguese structures where the church is still uh, intact. Uh, so it was, I mean, it's, it's uh, um, on the border between, uh, it's in Maharashtra. Uh, it's not in the Goa side, it's in the Maharashtra side. Uh, so Terracol uh, Fort and Beach is uh, also worth visiting if you uh, can find the time. Uh, but also there's another thing, if you uh, go further south of Savanpadi, uh, there is a, a, a forest called Dodamar, forest range. It's interesting because there, there is very uh, ancient swampy evergreen forest called Mistika forest. Mistika forests are found normally further south, but this is the only place in Maharashtra. They find this forest. Okay, so and Dora Marine, sometimes elephants also cross into Maharashtra. So for that's you know, for 
for those of you interested in natural history uh you know you must go to doraman fox and also if you go to uh, uh sindhudurg itself uh some of the bachat ghats is uh, women self help groups they actually are doing very interesting mangrove tourism now which is again a very interesting uh, you know uh, entrepreneurial spirit of that because i have not seen that kind of tourism anywhere else in maharashtra because a lot of the coastal tourism where is kind of thing is normally managed by people from elsewhere to come and set up hotels or resorts uh, but this kind of uh, tourism is something which offers a lot of potential for the local economy which is i think a uh, important thing for us to interesting thing for us to look at in terms of how the uh, economy can be so and of course it's uh, you know when we look at uh, malvan of course for me the most interesting part of malvan is malvani cuisine and uh, if you're a foodie and my apologies to all the vegetarians uh, here but if you're a foodie and you like uh, fish of course malvani food is uh, really amazing and also of course the uh, fact that in from ratnagiri malvan uh, this you know i it's very interesting when you talk about uh, uh, kokum sharbat and solkadi you know the uh, kokum trees are mostly in that belt in uh, sindhu there is a small patch of kokum trees in uh, sanjay gandhi national park with some kind of lactic soil and there's also kokum trees found in i think meghalaya i really don't know how but uh, there it's not really a part of the cuisine as it is uh, in terms of distinctive cuisine they use it of course it's not like as famous as it is in uh, malvan uh so that's a uh, so one of my attractions whenever i go to malvan is uh, uh this uh, you know the cuisine which is also important but uh, around sindhudurg there are so many places other than the beach which you should really look at you know there are uh, interesting temples at uh, kankavli uh and also if you, and there is also if you look at places like kudal these are places which are fast urbanizing if you look at the urban uh, local self governing process the smallest uh, urban local self governing uh, body is called a nagar panchayat and kudal became a nagar panchayat i think about 7 8 years ago so there is a lot of uh, economic interest activity of course a lot of it has been affected by covid but there are so many things both historically and otherwise to discover in uh, uh you know in uh, savantwadi uh in uh, sindhudurg district itself uh any other questions okay let me just i'm sorry i forgot if you if you look at raigad district there's another forest which uh you must visit it is easy to visit there are local groups which run uh, uh, tenting activities it's a fansad forest the fansar wildlife sanctuary used to be a part of the uh, hunting grounds of the uh, nawab of murud and uh, so therefore that uh, uh, forest is it's it's a it's a good evergreen forest but opposite the main sanctuary also there are small there are interesting dev rites with uh, you know sco- stone sculptures of forest deities interesting examples of you know uh, the the synthesis between animism and hindu religion so those of you who are anthropologists and things so that you should visit these uh, forest places at least one or two dev rites uh, near the sanctuary which is outside the sanctuary uh, place in fansar okay. and fansar wildlife sanctuary itself is you know it's a it's it's good for at least two days that's the only place this side we see the uh, malabar uh, malabar giant squirrel you know at mathiram there used to be a lot of malabar giant squirrel but they have been kind of driven out of mathiram most of the parts of mathiram by the monkeys but early we've heard calls we've seen at last i think 8 9 years i've not seen at least in mathiram
What is the question? Can somebody read the chat box? There's a question that just came up. You would like people to unmute and ask questions? No, but there was a question in the chat box. If somebody can read it, even if yeah, they can unmute minute, and ask. I'll it. just come, you know. Uh, yeah. One second. Uh, one was, of course, the uh, are they man made or natural walls which you yeah. have answered? Um, then uh, mangrove tourism is by boat. He's a yeah, it's by boat. There, that Rama has asked. Yeah, yeah, it's by boat. They take you in boats along these channels through the mangroves huh. and along the coast. Huh. Then Yogi Raj asks that do you find hero stones in Raigad district? I think see, uh, like the see if uh, the uh, Fansad place. I remember. See, I'm not sure whether the hero stones. Uh, or are there something else? Because I think I am mean, I'm, I'm not real. Uh, I was not sure, but there's one which I saw which looks like a hero stone. Uh, so in Fansad Wildlife Sanctuary, in one of the Dev Rise, if people can visit, uh, they can confirm. I think there are. Yeah. Okay. Then Ankur asks, any places to touch upon in Yavatmal, Chandrapur, and Gadhi? No, that I'm doing on the last day. Huh. Because Yavat, uh, Chandrapur, Yavatmal, about Gond. Uh, you know, Empire. There are lots of interesting things in uh, in in the Amravati and all massive forts. All that I will talk about when we go to uh, when I do on the last day. So today I'm just covering the coastal region, and uh, uh, so that's so. Therefore, I'm looking at only these from Palgar till uh, Sindhu. Yeah. So right now, there is only this much in the chat box. Um, you want to continue now, or is it uh, uh, enough? What is it? No, just I have two or three things to just to cover. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you continue. I mean, you yeah. take your time. Yeah. So there's there are just two or three things which I want to say. If you look at you know uh, uh, Raigad district, uh, you know if you uh, the kind of uh, uh, economic development has happened when uh, until I was chief minister for just I think two or three years. But if you look at you know the Tal Vaishet, uh, uh, there's a massive fertilizer plant near Alibad. Of course, a lot of people at that time said that it should not come there because of the kind of pollution. And at Nagotne, they set up a major uh, project on IPCL, which is now a part of Reliance Industries. But if you look at places like uh, Rasaini, uh, it was basically you know it was a, a complex for chemical industries, both public sector and private sector. And a lot of them, if you look at that, uh, the, there's a river which flows along uh, Rasaini called Patal Ganga. And if you look at the river uh, at uh, near uh, Apta Fata, uh, just after, before pain, you'll find that very often, you know, you find a lot of dead fish because a lot of the factories often don't uh, keep their effluent treatment plant uh, working all the time. And a lot of the water uh, is not portable. So they have to get water from uh, much further. So that's one of the problems along the many of these rivers is the, is the problem of the kind of industry. Like if you go to Roha, Roha is another place with a lot of chemical plants. And also tributary of the Savitri there. Uh, also you know, the, the fact that there's a lot of silting. Okay, many of the areas, you know, the, the, there's Regular, the flood waters come up quite up. I remember one year when we were doing tree planting, after we finished tree planting, the school children said, why are you doing tree planting here? He said, wait for some time in monsoon. When the river comes up, everything gets washed away. And the locals didn't tell us. So sometimes, you know, it is, uh, uh, if you don't understand the, the local area, you can do a lot of things which are actually waste of energy. Uh, but again, most of the uh, Konkan, because the soil is very lateral, uh, lateritic, okay? the runoff is very high. You know, the, the soil doesn't retain a lot of water. Okay? So that's something which is uh, uh, important. And also, if you look at the Konkan, if you look at the kind of uh, you know, destruction, the uh, cyclones like Nisarga, 
uh, and other did in terms of, and also uh, Nisarg especially was something which, you know, uh, the kind of destruction most people in Maharashtra possibly never experienced. Electricity could not be restored for about three to six weeks because transformers, transportation, everything just fell. So restoring that took a lot of time. So for people living on off the coast, because in the last two or three years, uh, earlier we only used to hear about cyclones on the east coast. But the Arabian Sea has been having a lot of cyclones in the last 10 years. Most of it used to move towards the Gulf, Arab Gulf. But now when you're visiting in terms of the number of trees which have got knocked down, No, and you know, the kind of compensation the government gives is very less because if people have to regrow trees, it take another five or seven years before they can produce fruits again. And the compensation is often less than what they would earn in a year. So a lot of us, uh, you know, are not uh, really familiar. Similarly, if you go to Ratnagiri, there is this uh, a place called... Uh, 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 Velas. The Velas is a place which is again uh, very interesting for ecotourism because the villagers there in two or three villages on that area <coughs> they've decided to take care of uh, turtle uh, you know uh, uh, conservation. So they actually cordoned off a part of the beach. People can't go. So but that you know the local I mean uh, there's a lot of uh, Ecotourism, which happens between uh, Jan and March. Yeah. Anjarle, uh, Velas, these are places which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, which are, again, interesting for people to visit. It's also help. I mean, it's a local community which is taken up. And they're doing an amazing job. So therefore, uh, that's something which I thought we must uh, uh, also mention because I mentioned about the mangrove tourism, but this in terms of uh, turtle conservation, uh, which is happening at Anjarle and uh, Velas is uh, really remarkable. Yeah. Any other questions? So there are no more questions. Yeah. If you want, you can unmute yourselves and ask also. Uh, so can you elaborate on SEZs in Maharashtra? Sudhaka, so, did you hear her? Just speak again, please. Just uh, ask the question again. Yes, ma'am. Uh, sir, can you elaborate on SEZs in Maharashtra? Sudhakar, it seems to have been frozen. I think there is some connectivity problem. Sudhakar, you are frozen. Sudhakar, are you there? Sudhakar, we can't hear you. You are frozen. Madhu, I'll call him. That will be the best. Sudhakar, Sudhakar. Shernaz, there is a question also in the chat. Uh, Sudhakar, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, I can hear. 
Yeah, so there is a question on the chat also. Yeah. I, what's the question? He suggests a book on Konkan. Huh? He suggests suggest a, book a book on Konkan. A book on the Konkan. What's, I didn't hear the question. Please suggest a book on Konkan. Yeah, maybe I will uh, uh, I will send, because offhand I can't remember, but uh, there are one or two books which I would like people to look at. Uh, I will suggest. Sudhakar, you can give a reading list at the end, you know. Okay. Yeah. You know, the, uh, you know, there are a lot of places, like if you go to places like Ganpati Pule, uh, you know, there are parts of the uh, Konkan where the sea is very rough, especially Ganpati Pule is very, very dangerous. But, you know, I've never understood why, uh, especially Sindhudurg, uh, has not really developed as much as Goa has in terms of uh, tourism and things like that. Because uh, uh, Tarkali, and there are so many beaches near uh, uh, Sindhudur, uh, which are really well. And even, as I said, even Terakol Beach is very, very nice. Uh, so these are uh, beaches which are, which are quite calm. I mean, Ratnagiri, many of the parts and all the sea is still rough. But if you go for south, most of the beaches in, in Sindhudur uh, is something which is, uh, yeah. Uh, so what's the question on natural history? There is another question on SEZs. Somebody wants to know more about SEZs. Okay. Uh, see, the uh, SEZ, of course, if you talk about um, SEZ, the, uh, uh, the most uh, interesting one was where Reliance SEZ was to happen in uh, Pain, Haluka. And that is the only time the opposition was so much. That's the only time where the government allowed a referendum. And 98% of them said, that they don't want an ACZ to come because, as I said, Pain Taluka, there is a lot of agriculture. Rice uh, is something where it's still very uh, lucrative. And therefore, the Pain ACZ is something which I uh, definitely know. And also in places like Chuplun, a lot of the uh, AC, uh, I mean, a lot of the economic units have not really taken off uh, because, in terms of you know, infrastructure is poor. Uh, and in terms of, you no, know, so therefore they, they've not really taken off. But in the coastal part, the pain one I know was definitely there was a lot of opposition and it was uh, stopped. Uh, but other than that, I don't think there are many uh, different, uh, 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 no, other ACZs for the so There are, of course, a lot of MIDC in uh, places like Kudal and other places. But MIDC model is something which is interesting because they look to government and barren land. And therefore, very rarely do the MIDC take up agricultural land or take land, uh, private land. And uh, those of you interested in economic development, I think MIDC model is amazing because I think they have more than 1,80,000 units uh, in different MIDCs across Maharashtra, uh, which I think is an amazing success story. There are problems maybe because one can always find fault, but it's something which is, I think, uh, important. Yeah, see, about there's a question, I think, about the Deccan Plateau. See, a lot of the Deccan Plateau, see, when you talk about the Deccan Plateau as well as the uh, Western Ghats, you know, there were volcanic eruptions 65 million years ago, which uh, covered more than 5 lakh square kilometers. And it also a lot to do with the way the lava flows and then the erosion which takes place, which uh, shaped a lot of that. And also when you talk about the Deccan trap, the word trap is Swedish for steps, you know, that step like uh, lava flows. Any other questions? Uh, there's a question that please can you update us on the natural vegetation of Maharashtra? Ha. <sighs> You know, the, if you look at the natural vegetation, so if, if I look at the Konkan, you know, there's a lot of stretch, which is, of course, the mangrove, which is evergreen. Okay. Uh, a lot of places in the Konkan also have uh, deciduous trees uh, in terms of, so if, so if you look at the uh, uh, trees like Anjan, etc., if you go to Fansad, you see a lot of trees like uh, 
uh, anjan, there are a lot of these dry evergreens which grow. So if you look at the Konkan, uh, definitely, as I said, uh, there are uh, these evergreen patches. Fansad is mixed deciduous. So it has uh, teak, arjun, and those kind of trees, but it also has a lot of evergreen trees. Uh, Mathiran is completely evergreen. Okay. Uh, I can send a, a somewhere which I can send uh, offhand, I don't remember, but I can give that. Amboli is again evergreen. And Dodamar, I said, is uh, something which is uh, swampy evergreen forest. So if you look at the Western Ghats, it's a mixture of uh, uh, moist deciduous, deciduous and evergreen. Okay, so therefore, I will talk about it when I come to each of these uh, uh, places. Uh, but details, I will, I mean, I need a little more uh, revision of and I don't remember the names. If you have um, taken this question on famous meters in the area. Yeah, so, as I said, no, I, from uh, uh, Tarkali, Sindhudur, uh, I, I would start from Terakol. And there are these lots of uh, small, small beaches. Often, again, my memory is uh, slightly failing me. But Tarkali, I know, is a major this thing. Uh, around Malvan itself, there are three or, three or four beaches. And of course, Raigad, if you look at the Alibag stretch, uh, right from uh, Kihim, uh, Nagao. Nagao Beach and all is uh, uh, really good. And there are other smaller beaches again, offhand, I forget the beaches. Uh, from uh, Alibag to Hari Areshwar, there are lots of good beach stretches, including Muru. Something else I wanted to say, which. Any more questions? There is a question from Yogi Raj. Yeah. So please let us know about the wooden toys, Ganjifa, playing cards from Savantwadi. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I forgot that. You know, that's a, it's, it's a, you know, it's a, uh, uh, if you go to Savantwadi, the Ganjifa cards, I suppose, I mean, are really uh, amazing because they have a lot of uh, stories uh, from the Puranas, etc. And they also use a lot of you know, the uh, hand painted with gold effects. So the Ganjifa cards, uh, if you actually go there, you can feel, see the production of it. And the wooden toys also in the Savanfadi Museum. And you can also see artisans which are working on. Unfortunately, that is something which is not really popularized. Uh, uh, Ganjifa cards, you know, it's, uh, I don't know how in mind. Uh, I'm so glad you asked the question because that is something again, uh, which uh, includes uh, which kind of uh, weaves in mythology uh, into uh, you know uh, various kinds of you know oral tradition in cards and playing and all of that. So that's uh, that's amazing, and uh, it's again the problem is in terms of very little publicity, and it's not known outside of uh, Savantwadi much, and I don't know why is the uh, why. Uh, that's not really, yeah, somebody has done a PhD, maybe they can talk better. Why? I never understood why it's not popular elsewhere in the world. Because that's a unique kind of, you know, the art is really uh, fantastic. And wooden toys, uh, for me personally, in terms of the fact that it's not really kept up with the uh, trends and tastes. A lot of the wooden toys, because a lot of people there, so it is not really uh, had some kind of connect with the pulse of the people. So the wooden toys, at least for me, they've almost become more of an anachronism because lots of uh, changes in taste and that is not really kept up. And I don't think they're getting enough funding. Marketing is very, very poor. So it gets restricted to people who visit Saavan Party. Nowhere else I don't see much of that. Uh, yeah. Any other questions, please? Any more questions? Sudhakar, what will you be doing tomorrow? Tomorrow I'm covering West Maharashtra. If I have time, I'll cover Khandesh. Because my sequence is first day is Konkan, second day is Western Maharashtra, third day is uh, Marathwada, and uh, last day is Vidarbha.
Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, be seeing all of y'all tomorrow and we will give the feedback form at the end of the four sessions. So uh, there will not be individual forms for individual sessions. We'll give a collected feedback form at the end of four sessions. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Madhu. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sudhakar. And we use the same link tomorrow. And the session is from 7 to 8.30. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. It was really wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, night ma'am. Good night, sir. Good night.